Hi everyone, it's Helen Horta here, founder of FormHub, and we are on the smartstraveler.gov.au website, and we are doing a Smart Traveler Advice Daily Update for the following countries. So we've got China, Nigeria, Fiji, Indonesia, Eswatini, Botswana, Mozambique, and Malawi. So let's get straight into China. So this was updated on the 6th of April and it's still current as at today being the 8th of April 2022. So recent COVID-19 outbreaks in Shanghai and other large cities have resulted in city-wide residential lockdowns, closures of schools, businesses and suspension of public transport. So access to medical facilities and other essential services has also been disrupted. Now further COVID-19 outbreaks throughout China are possible and countermeasures including flight suspensions and rerouting and mass testing may be imposed with little or no warning. So stay informed of local conditions, particularly if you intend to travel to China and pre-departure testing requirements for China have changed. So see the travel details below. As previously advised, authorities have detained foreigners on grounds of endangering national security and Australians may be at risk of arbitrary detention. Now the Australian government does advise exercise a high degree of caution in China overall due to the impacts of COVID-19 and then other levels do apply in some of the other areas. Now again exercise a high degree of caution in China and exercise a high degree of caution in Tibet and Ying Yang. Okay so if you scroll down below there is more information there for you to read and that is the latest travel update from the Australian government for China. Next we'll go to Nigeria. Nigeria now this is updated on the 6th of April and is still current as at today being the 8th of April and it reads in March 2022 gunmen attacked a train traveling between Abuja and Kaduna killing several passengers and abducting others. So avoid intercity transport by road and rail and groups often target transport routes. You should reconsider your need to travel to Nigeria and the potential for terrorism, kidnapping, crime and civil unrest is high throughout Nigeria. Now we continue to advise do not travel to other parts of Nigeria due to the very high risk to your safety. Now if despite our advice you understand take travel within Nigeria, research route and get professional security advice and support before departing. And the Australian government does advise reconsider your need to travel to Nigeria overall due to high threats of terrorist attack and kidnapping, uh, the volatile security situation and possible violent civil unrest and high levels of violent crime and higher levels do apply. And again, reconsider your need to travel to Nigeria. Do not travel to Adamawa, Borno, Gombe, Kaduna, Katsina, Yobi and Zamfara states. And do not travel to areas bordering Niger. Do not travel to coastal areas of Aqua Ebom, Bayasa, Cross River, Delta and Rivers states due to the very high risk of kidnapping, robbery and armed attacks and then exercise a high degree of caution in the states of Aqua Ebom, Benue, Cross River, Edo, Ebonyi, Enugu, Ekiti, Kwara, Lagos, Ogan, Ondo, Osan and Oyo. Okay and if you scroll down below there is more information there for you to read and that is the latest travel updates from the Australian government for Nigeria. Next we'll go to Fiji. Fiji. So this is updated on the 6th of April and it's still current as at today being the 8th of April and it reads fully vaccinated tourists and travellers can enter Fiji without prior approval or quarantine and travellers 12 years and over must show a negative COVID-19 test before travelling and this can be a PCR test taken no more than two calendar days before scheduled departure 
or a negative supervised RAT taken within 24 hours of your flight's scheduled departure. Now you must also show proof of full vaccination at check-in as well as evidence of a pre-booked RAT that will be administered within 48 to 72 hours following your arrival into Fiji and you must have travel insurance with international coverage for COVID-19. And face masks are optional and social distancing requirements aren't being enforced. Regularly review the Ministry of Health and Medical Services website and Facebook page to monitor the COVID-19 situation in Fiji. And the Australian government does advise exercise a high degree of caution in Fiji due to the impacts of COVID-19 and again exercise a high degree of caution in Fiji. And if you scroll down below there is more information there for you to read and that is the latest travel updates from the Australian government for Fiji. Next we'll go to Indonesia. Indonesia. So this is updated on the 8th of April being today and it reads to travel to Indonesia you must be vaccinated with at least two COVID-19 vaccine doses. You must also provide evidence of a COVID PCR test taken within 48 hours of departure to Indonesia and if you have any COVID-19 symptoms or a body temperature above 37.5 degrees Celsius on arrival you must take a COVID-19 PCR test. You'll need to self-isolate until you receive a negative result. And if you test positive for COVID-19 and have moderate or severe symptoms, you may be taken to a hospital for treatment or, a, or an isolation hotel at your own expense. Now, children under six are not required to be vaccinated to enter Ind Indonesia. Partially vaccinated six to 17 year olds may be required to complete vaccinations by local authorities. And you can apply for a tourist visa on arrival in some cities such as Jakarta, Bali, Surabaya, Makassar, Yogyakarta, Medan and Manado. And if you meet certain requirements see the travel information below. So check the latest visa entry and vaccination requirements with your travel provider or an Indonesian embassy or consulate before travel. And the Australian government does advise exercise a high degree of caution in Indonesia overall due to security risks, the impacts of COVID-19 and then higher levels apply in some other areas. Again, the advice levels exercise a high degree of caution in Indonesia and reconsider your need to travel to Postal Regency in central Sulawesi and to Papua province. And that is the latest travel advice updates from the Australian government for Indonesia. Next we'll go to Eswatini. Eswatini. So this is updated on the 8th of April and it reads, We now advise you exercise a high degree of caution in Eswatini. Now to enter Eswatini you, you'll need proof of being fully vaccinated or a negative COVID-19 test taken 72 hours before your arrival. And the Australian government does advise exercise a high degree of caution in Eswatini due to the risk of civil unrest and the impacts of COVID-19. And again, those advice levels exercise a high degree of caution in Eswatini. And if you scroll down below, there is more information there for you to read. And that is the latest travel advice updates for Eswatini from the Australian government. Next we'll go to Botswana. Botswana. So this was updated on the 8th of April and it reads, we now advise you exercise a high degree of caution in Botswana. To enter Botswana you'll need to show proof that you're fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and if you're not fully vaccinated you may be required to undergo vaccination or PCR testing at your port of entry. Now the Australian government does advise exercise a high degree of caution in Botswana due to the impacts of COVID-19 and again the advice levels exercise a high degree of caution in Botswana. And if you scroll down below there is more information there for you to read and that is the latest travel update from the Australian government for Botswana. Next we'll go to Mozambique. Mozambique. Okay, so this was updated on the 8th of April and it reads, We now advise you exercise a high degree of caution in Mozambique. So on arrival you must present proof of a negative COVID-19 PCR test issued within 72 hours before travel. Children under 11 do not require testing and terrorists remain active in Cabo uh, Delgado. Attacks have recently occurred in Cabo de Delgado including in the Pemba region in Feb 2022. 
tourists are likely to target areas frequented by foreigners or where foreign companies operate and where expatriate staff reside. Now, Australians in Cabo Delgado should leave the area if it's safe to do so. And if you decide to remain in the area, maintain heightened security awareness, monitor local media and follow the advice of local authorities. And the Australian government does advise exercise a higher degree of caution in Mozambique uh, overall due to the risk of terrorism and high levels of serious crime. And again, higher levels do apply in some other parts of the country. And again, those advice levels exercise a high degree of caution in Mozambique. Do not travel to Cabo Delgado and do not travel on the EN1 between the Save River and Maksangu and from Gorongosa to Kaya and on the EN6 between Beira and Chimoyo. And if you scroll down below, there is more information there for you to read. And And that is the latest travel updates from the Australian government for Mozambique. And lastly, we'll conclude with Malawi. Malawi. And this was updated on the 8th of April and it reads, we have reviewed our advice and now advise you exercise a high degree of caution in Malawi. The Australian Embassy in Harare continues to provide limited consular services and you can email the embassy at consular.harare at defat.gov.au. And again, the Australian government does advise exercise a high degree of caution in Malawi due to the impacts of COVID-19 and then other levels apply in some parts of the country. And again, those advice levels again, exercise a high degree of caution in Malawi and exercise a high degree of caution in Mulanji district due to the high rates of violent crime. And if you scroll down below, there is more information there for you to read. And that is the latest travel advice update from Malawi. And that concludes our Smart Traveller Advice daily update for those countries. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, Keep safe wherever you are in the world. It's Helen Hortai, founder of Form Help, signing out. Bye.